Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Hijas de la Chicanex, Orgullosamente de Aquí y de Allá. De allá. Happy Monday or whatever day you are listening to this episode on because I know that when I listen to podcasts, it has to be a day or a time where I'm actually free and I can pay attention to people's thoughts on topics that I like. So if you're listening to this on whatever day, hope you're having a great day. And thank you so much for listening to us. Thank you so much. And and, and you're right, Christy. I'm like you. I, I feel like I don't listen to episodes the day that they're released. I typically listen to them the day after or the week after. And I listen to them when I'm exercising or on a long commute or when I'm going for a walk. Yeah, I myself do the same thing because I actually pay attention to people's thoughts on topics that I really enjoy. So I always like kind of want to take it all in. So right. my ideal place to listen to a podcast is usually like in my car when I'm driving to a far destination See. or not when I'm working out because I take classes to work out. <laughs> so not when I'm working out, but if I'm washing the dishes or doing chores around the house. So yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. What's up, Ritzy? What have you been up to this week? What have I been up to? I ate a takoyaki this week. I think okay. that's... A- Un taco de qué? No, cariño. <laughs> it, it's... <laughs> I feel like that's something my dad would say. Un taco de qué? Takoyaki? See? <laughs> what is it? No es un taco. Es, es? It's Japanese street food. It, they're oh, little balls cool. of, yeah, they're little balls of octopus that are in a batter and fried uh, and they have Japanese mayo. It's a street food. It's so I can't good. can't eat octopus. I will not even eat it in really? ceviche. I cannot. No sé, just the fact that there's like so many little the tentacles yeah i cannot do you have that phobia of saying clusters of holes together have you heard about i, I have i have that phobia do i forget you? the name for it yeah i don't know i guess just because i know there's so many yeah <laughs> that it kind of throws me off because I, I can't to- even do calamari oh really really yeah that's how much i you don't like do octopus uh-uh not even with a good marinara sauce, you Mm-mm. won't. Mm-hmm. No, I can't. So, Interesante, yeah. cariño. Very it's, interesting. Uh, well, it's really good. I try not to visualize the tentacles, but it's really good. And speaking of tacos, I did eat tacos. I ate tacos de tripita. Ah, uh, see? I actually like tacos de tripita. Que bueno, because not a lot of people <laughs> yeah. A lot of people get put <laughs> off when I, w- as soon as I mention the name tripita, they're done. No, no, no. I actually really enjoy tacos de tripitas. Not all the time. It's mm-hmm. not my desired taco. But when I do, it's because it's really toasty and it tastes like a chicharron. My sí. my dad's cousin one time made it for us, and he was like, oh, try this. And I was a little scared and skeptical because he told me it was tripitas, but I tried it because I didn't want to be rude, and it was actually really good. So, de repente, I'll order a taco de tripitas, yeah. but the idea of it being tripitas... Where the food passes throws me off. And- for cow on. because have you ever had your parents tell you when you're little like ah te están haciendo ruidos las tripitas because <laughs> ah, you're hungry yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I always automatically think of tripitas and yeah it kind of dis- disgusts me but they're good they are really good I really like them I don't know if it's an acquired taste I've had them since I was a little kid oh really mm-hmm. really that or tacos de lengua throw me no, off no I cannot do tacos you know, de I, lengua you know I always tell this people day. this and if you're listening to this and you get offended by me saying this or you laugh at it. It's sí, literally how I... Papá, por ejemplo, le encantan. Oh, Yo no puedo. Dude, I can't. You know why? And you're going to probably laugh at me for saying this. But since I grew up going to Rancho my whole life, I've seen so many cows. And I've seen cows eating grass, dude. And cuando me dicen tacos de lengua, all you I imagine is like, la mendiga lengua <laughs> comiendo el zacate. <laughs> and you're putting that in a taco. Oh, I can't. But anyways, back to the Japanese thing that you just <laughs> mentioned. Bad Bunny came out with a song that he spoke Japanese in. Did oh, you hear really? it? No. Yeah. yeah. It's a new song that he just came out with. And in the video for this song, it's actually called Yonaguni. Mm-hmm. I want to say that's what it's called. Um, in the music video, he transitioned at the end of it into an anime. And he actually speaks Japanese in the song right. as well. And I watched a video the other day of actually Japanese like people listening to it. And they were like, oh, man, he actually really sounded really good. So... It's really cool to see that or hear that. Yeah, I have to say, I really appreciate that he's including, you know, that anime subculture in his in his music or or or, or tapping into that. Yes, and I really appreciate the eclectic nature of Bad Bunny. 
Yeah, me probably too. why I have a big crush on him too. Do you really? I do. <laughs> I mean, Wapo for sure. He definitely is. I remember the beginning of his career. He would always wear uh, glasses to cover his face, so I never got to see what he looked like. And I just remember seeing him in concert, like, whoa, then. You are not bad looking, sir. <laughs> heard it here, folks. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, that's something that's interesting right now that you See, mentioned Japanese. Speaking of Japan, Christy, and anime, have you watched the new Sailor Moon movie on Netflix? I have not. <laughs> You're laughing. Did you just mention Netflix yeah. again? <laughs> I feel like every week you bring up Netflix and I really need to watch it. I feel like they they should really sponsor this podcast now. (laughs) Yeah. No, I haven't. I have it. Is it a new uh, movie or is it one of the old ones? I should say it has a, it has a part one and a part two. It, I don't, I'm not entirely sure if it's a continuation, but it seems to me it's a new story, new plot. Nice. Are the old characters in there? Like the main characters? The the main characters are there. Oh, nice. And there are new characters, but the main characters are there. And my favorite growing up was Sailor Sailor Mars. Which one's that one? Sailor Mars has the dark, long hair, the black, long hair. Oh, okay. And you have long black hair. I do. I do. And I I think unconsciously as a child, I would really like Sailor Sailor Mars because I could see a little bit of myself reflected back, even though this character looked nothing like me. And speaking of of representation, they also featured a lot of queer characters. Oh, really? So they did change it up then? They did. They did. I think Sailor Moon has been big for some in the queer community. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this time they featured queer characters and I really appreciated that. Oh, that's and it nice. is Pride Month, right? I think that sometimes representation can be purely symbolical and lead to a one way road. But for, for, for Sailor Moon I really appreciated that this time they featured That's amazing because a lot of our CR generation grew up watching Sailor Moon. So be see. to be able to see the representation of what is not new to society but being accepted in society right, finally right. it's starting to be represented especially right now during pride month that's so cool right now that you were mentioning about um liking sailor mars you said um see. i thought about how i was like did i ever see myself in any of the sailor moon girls but i didn't because unfortunately there was no plus size yeah that's sailor true. sailor moon girls um so i thought that was really interesting and i thought that was like a perfect seg into the topic of today do you want to introduce it yes i think that's a wonderful segue the topic for today it's about body image it's about body positivity it's about the way that the body is represented in digital media and the ways in which images of ideal or idealized manhood and womanhood are portrayed and as well as this episode is about advocating for the visibility of of bodies that don't always or are not always represented or don't always fit into mainstream media or mainstream beauty standards of course and also being chicanx growing up in a latin household and having to constantly battle the idea of a certain image that you should have because you're latin uh so we're gonna talk about that today but before doing so we want to talk about our second feature but first want to say thank you to everyone who showed love to our first feature last week which was jesse's musica she is so talented and we were really 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 happy to have her in last week's episode and you guys just show love on our social media platforms but today's feature is a dear friend of mine his name is ozzy some of you may know him as body life by ozzy he is a big part of the latinx chicanx community in chicago and his brand is called body life by ozzy and he has a private gym in chicago that i feel like has been skyrocketing for the past couple of years and it's only getting bigger and better and i personally think that he deserves all of the success that he has because he just has a heart of gold ritzy has not met him Mm -mm. but she knows about him i do and she also thought that it would be great to feature him today because like i I mentioned he's a big part of the community i i did it's so fascinating to see the way the ways in which his gym has had an impact on the latinx community the latino latina community and the chicanx community for this feature, we asked Ozzy a few questions. We, we asked him how health, fitness, and, and body positivity play a role 
in his in his life as well as how they connect and relate to the Latinx and the Chicanx community. We also asked him how he expresses himself and strengthens body positivity via the physical exercises that he performs or enacts. So incredible to see how Body Life by Ozzy, because ese es el nombre de su gimnasio, el impacto que tiene este gimnasio en la comunidad. Yeah, definitely. His slogan, it has always been, porque me quiero, me cuido. Mm. And I sympathize that with, with, uh, with that a lot because... Sí. I feel like when we think about body image or body positivity, just in general, when it comes to anything with the body, you automatically think, I have to lose weight, I have to look a certain way, I'm not fitting into society's standards. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he's really broken a lot of barriers For with sure. just that slogan itself. And I think that's a big reason as to why I've always felt so comfortable going to his gym at a very young age. One of my aunts introduced me to it. And it's just been like a second home to me because of that. He really like just radiates this mm. very welcoming atmosphere and anybody, any age, any size can go and he just makes you feel like you really are just doing this because you really just do lo love yourself enough for right. it. So like we mentioned, we asked him a couple of questions. Uh, you guys can actually check him out through our Instagram. We made a dedicated post to him, and you can also find him on his social media under the handle at Body Life by Ozzy. So with that, here is Ozzy and a little bit about himself. Hopefully you guys love him as much as we do. Go show him some love on his social media platforms. And once he finishes talking, we'll jump right into the topic of the day. In my experience training hundreds of people from all backgrounds and growing up as a Mexican American, I have noticed that the Latino community invests significantly less in health and wellness than other communities. The reasons are many, but one of the biggest factors is likely that socioeconomic disparities greatly impact communities of color, and often the gyms that I worked in were located in communities with a higher cost of living. That being said, if I wanted to see a change, I had to be the change, which is why Body Life by Ozzy is located in Brighton Park instead of old Irving Park where I grew up. Growing up in the north side, I saw big and fancy gyms in every block, but why wasn't it the same for communities with people that looked like me? I find that oftentimes people in the Latinx community aren't conflicted when making expensive clothing or accessory purchases, but when it comes to health and wellness, we aren't willing to make an investment. Instead, we play into the mindset that we somehow can do it ourselves. My job as a personal trainer is to figure out how to add fitness and wellness into someone's life long term. And what usually ends up happening is they perform better at work, have more energy to be present with family and friends, and just overall end up being better human beings. I think other cultures already know the truth and are more willing to invest in fitness, while Latinos don't know it yet. I want to reveal the truth of the value of fitness to the Latinx community. Fitness isn't just a luxury anymore. It's a necessity if you want to take your life to the next level. I'm going to do everything in my power to bring fitness to light in my community. I know fitness and wellness can be expensive, but other things in which we invest are also expensive. Initially, fitness may not seem like an investment with a high return, but with time, it gives you the biggest return in the world, which is a longer, more successful, healthier life. Growing up, William Levy was my inspiration, and I wanted to look just like him, with the exception that I was not a blonde, I didn't have hazel eyes, and I was skinny as a twig. And as I started my fitness journey, I realized I would never look like him. So I had to learn to embrace my God-given gifts, which we all have. And that is where Porque Me Quiero, Me Cuido began. It was my daily affirmation, which reminded me why I was doing it. Not to look like William Levy, but to be the best version of myself that I could be. If you want to see a change, you must change. And if you don't believe it, well then repeat to yourself every single day when you wake up, in the middle of the day, after you eat, and before you go to bed, porque me quiero, me cuido. Say it as often as you need until you understand it and you realize the importance that that phrase brings to your life. I express myself and strengthen body positivity through my ABCDs of exercise. A for activa ese cuerpecito. B, bebe mucha agua. Sí, come bien carajo. And D, duerme y descansa por Dios santo. 
If you were looking for a sign, look no further. And just remember, O-Z-Z-Y, Body Life by Ozzy. We're located in the heart of the Latinx community here in Brighton Park, Chicago. Visit us. If you want to reach out to me, you can go ahead and find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Uber Eats. <laughs> no, but for real, go ahead and find me as Body Life by Ozzy with a Y. You can also visit our website, www.bodylifebyozzy.com, where I'm all the time posting new ways as to how you can live a healthier lifestyle in just a few minutes and from the comfort of your home even. Please feel free to reach out. I'm gladly here waiting for you. <laughs> bye bye. Body image. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> Such a sensitive topic for many people and. I've mentioned this before in the podcast. To me, the audience that bothers to listen to our episodes, I hold them dear and close to my heart. I think of you guys as like friends. So I feel like I can actually express myself on a very personal level and express my thoughts and hopefully not be judged by them. And if I am judged by them, I hope I'm listened to. And body image is a very sensitive topic in my life because I am a plus size girl. And Ritzy knows that. So we're going to talk about body image. We're going to talk about body image today. Speaking about body image, I can't help but always question and probe the term or the word really beauty and beautiful. Mm -hmm. I can't help but stop and think about current and past western beauty standards of what is considered b beautiful and i think a lot of the times that somebody who's thin mm -hmm. white able-bodied doesn't have a, dis a disability and somebody who's cisgendered and so i th i think about that and i and i know that this episode is going to be is very sensitive as well as it might be hopefully liberating Mm -hmm. To both of us. Of course. Right now there is literally dead silence because we actually closed the windows today. No, <laughs> so, no pajaritos. So it's literally just Ritzy and I and a mic in front of us really having a deep conversation about, like I mentioned, this topic. And I also agree with you on what you just said. Um, and I also think that society has played a big part on how people judge themselves before they let other people judge them you automatically let your insecurities run wild when sometimes someone's not looking at you like that but you are programmed to think that society has a perfect standard of what beauty is and i love that nowadays there is a lot of like body positivity around the world um in digital society you could say but there's also still a standard of where you should hold yourself to. And it's like a constant battle of Definitely. am I good enough still? And I think also as Mexican-American women, we feel it in the way we are represented in the media or the way we're not represented in media because Latinas constantly have this very like – strong spotlight on them and how mm -hmm. they look and how curvy they are yeah, or yeah. how what kind of color skin tone they have or mm -hmm. hair or whatnot so we can go on for days and days and days but i definitely think body is that one thing that always always sticks out and you're constantly asking yourself and i know i'm not alone in this because this has been a very deep conversation with many of my friends constantly and from all different shapes and sizes i will add mm -hmm. not only plus size but See. different shapes and sizes beautiful women both inside and out but that constantly question am i good enough because the media has this certain stereotype of woman in their mind or a prototype woman, a yeah. prototype of what you should look like definitely i think that the, the media oftentimes as mexican-american women and the way that latinas or mexican-american actors actress actresses are portrayed it's oftentimes focusing a lot on the and this term is not one that I liked to utilize in, in my own lexicon. Exotic, right? Mm -hmm. Exotic or curvy. Of course. Or spicy. Or f and looking at, I'm thinking back 
at an article that Aida Hurtado wrote. She is a professor in California, and it's called Much More Than a Butt, and it looks at Jennifer Lopez mm -hmm. and representations of her in the media. I can't re recall exactly the the entire name of the article, but, I, but yeah. I'm thinking of that. And I think back at a film that I watched with J-Lo a while back, not to go on a tangent, where she is playing the protagonist, in some ways the protagonist, but in some ways she's really not, and they call her exotic multiple times. Mm -hmm. And they're focusing on the, the curviness of her body, right? Of because course. she doesn't fit the Western beauty standards of thin and white. Yeah. I also think about current Western beauty standards and how the term thinness can often be interplayed and synonymous with healthy. And yeah. that's not always the case. It's definitely not the Thinness case. Thinness does not equate healthy. And oftentimes we are thought or the media acts as though it, 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 it is. And, and, and it's not just the media, right? Because I also think about it as these colonial beauty standards. So it's mm -hmm. also, there's a sedimentation of it historically. When I think of body positivity, Yes, I'm thinking about my body, but I'm also thinking about body positivity in terms of race, gender, and, and sexuality. I think of that, and I think of loving yourself can be so hard, but it's also this revolutionary, beautiful act and insurgent act. Mm -hmm. Because I think as Mexican-American women, and, and I think I'm getting kind of emotional. I don't know why Aww. I feel like my, my skin kind of like, it's so hard to be taught to, to love yourself. Yeah, it is. And I think that also because, like we mentioned in other episodes, like telenovelas or even music, sometimes our parents grow up watching that and they think like other people, there's a, a particular way you should look. And obviously they want to protect you. So they, in a in a tough love way, sometimes will express things of how you should look or dress or ha you know have a certain way of being based on what society has already mm -hmm. implemented in their heads mm -hmm. or in our heads right and it makes you it definitely makes you question am i good enough to be out in society but i i've battled with this my whole life i was plus size since i was a little baby yeah <laughs> i was a very cheesy cheeky little baby and I grew up being plus size and it's been a journey for me to accept the way that I was built, you know, and I think being growing up and being more of an adult and seeing how, you know, society portrays it. And like you just mentioned, there's a difference between being fit and being healthy. Um, I think that a lot of us get lost in the transition of taking fit to be healthy because just being fit does not mean that you're going to be completely healthy you have to understand that health is a whole different ball game compared mm. to the fitness of mm. it um and uh, that's why i mentioned that like i work out every day i started off working out every day when i was younger because i was constantly trying to fit like a certain type of idea that society had in store for me yeah but throughout the years um that has completely like washed away from my mind and now I do it more so because I really like how I feel I like the energy I get from it I like how I feel more comfortable in my skin because mm. I know I'm stronger yeah. not because I look a certain way it's just because I know I'm stronger and I challenge myself and it's really become like my lifestyle um but many many women dominantly of course I'm sure mask like men as well they battle with weight and body positivity and body image all the time Absolutely. but um in the latin community it's like one thing that sometimes people can be shamed for <laughs> you know the way you look but then at the same time it's like the food is so freaking good <laughs> los tacos y las tortas y las quesadillas y las micheladas and everything so you're constantly put on a wall to wall of like okay I want to be what society wants me to be. But then at the same time, I want to indulge in my culture. I want to like really, you know, explore what it is to be Mexican and my roots. Yeah. And there's a wide array of gastronomy too, right? Yeah. And so there are infinite possibilities to also continue that eating that without 
you saying, I'm going to continue eating that, but I know that that will lead to me not being healthy. Yeah. Um, and I think it's about finding equilibrium, but also, and you balancing out that particular area in terms of, of your health. Definitely. Definitely. I think it's definitely a balance. Um, just to go like on a lighter note, uh, growing up and going to your grandparents' house and constantly having your grandma shove food down your mouth. <laughs> ¿Ya sí. comiste? ¿Te dieron de comer? ¿Vas a comer? Mm -hmm. Or entering like a, a stranger's home, but sí. you try not to be rude. And it's like, sí. comete un plato, you know? I wonder if that stems from their childhood, right? Where they mm -hmm. might not have always had a plate of food. And so they, they want to make sure that you have a plate of food. Yeah, it's more like of a protective caring for you because they obviously didn't have what we are lucky to have sí. now and this just goes all the way back to you know living in mexico searching for a better life poner un plato de comida en la mesa claro but then that could easily be portrayed into are you telling me that i'm too skinny are you telling mm. me that or why are you eating another plate believe me i don't know about you but have you ever had your mom or your dad tell you like <laughs> Otro? <laughs> Otro. <laughs> Otro plato, Cristina. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Los tacos están buenos. <laughs> right now, right now, there's a meme running around where <laughs> it says the guy's asking, like, <laughs> he reads your order out loud. He's all like, <laughs> ocho tacos de asada, cinco tortas, Diez quesa diez quesadillas. <laughs> and he's like putting the order on black. <laughs> and, it made, and it literally has gone viral because so many people can resonate with the fact that sometimes you're just really enjoying the food. But sí. then you have your grandma, your grandpa, your mom, your dad, your whoever it is questioning you like, Otro plato I from afar con, And sí. I'm like, yo, I'm really enjoying my food. <laughs> but, um. No, I agree with you. I think that it comes definitely from a place of we have a lot of things that before we didn't have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And food brings people together. Definitely. Uh, it's one of those things that just unites. A communal, a communal experience. Yes, but sometimes I also feel like it, it's frowned upon what you eat, how many times you eat it. And like earlier you mentioned, there's a balance and I've learned that for myself. I'm still plus size and I'm proud of it. You know, I really accept my curves, but sí. there was a time I didn't. And I would constantly question, should I eat that extra tortilla? Should I eat that flan or that tres leches mm -hmm. or what now? But now I, I know that I focus so much on being a healthy person all around. And I can do that because why would you ever punish yourself for something that you are only punishing yourself for? No one is keeping tabs on you, <laughs> so why would you do it on yourself? And why would you put yourself in, I guess you could say, a little jail of being harsh on yourself? Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it leads to bad things. It leads to, it leads to binge eating. It leads to sicknesses or diseases that later on in life may not be the best thing for you. Right. You know, so we all just have to eating focus disorders, on yeah. eating disorders. Exactly. It's a very sensitive subject, like we said, and. I love that I have friends that see body image and body positivity in so many different sides of the spectrum because it makes you think like, wow, I'm not by myself when I think about mm -hmm. this topic. Definitely not. Our bodies play a big role in, the, in our lived experiences. They construe part of our lived experiences, if not a vast amount of them. So everybody's thinking maybe not talking about their body, mm -hmm. um, which is why you and I have had these conversations circling off, off, yeah, the mic. off the mic about the body, the body image and what's beautiful and, and what's not. And, and when we're othered because we look different. Uh, and I think of myself, how hard it was for me to get to a point in my life where I loved my body and myself. Mm -hmm. Um, loving myself is something and for many people that we're working on every day mm -hmm. yes I can say that I love my body but I can also say that I have goals and that I'm not maybe where I ideally wish I would be with loving myself and my body of course uh, and I think that it's it's so important you know like we're constantly we're constantly 
battling when those days when you don't exactly feel yourself or there are those days when I uh, I don't know me gusta como me veo etc no mm -hmm. and eh, para hacer el aire un poco más risueño como ese eh, the meme of, of the Grinch who stole Christmas <laughs> when he's trying out multiple outfits looking at himself up and down to, from head to toe uh -huh. and at he's the like, end I'm he's not like going. yeah <laughs> <laughs> tell me why that's been me so many times so many times <laughs> i i could go days and feeling myself like wow i'm so curvy like i love my curves i think i'm amazing try on that dress See? try on those pants and See? then you're like I'm not going because <laughs> it's true. See? And I love that you and I can say that we have that yeah. shared experience. Experience, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, but damn, it's true. And that's why that meme hits differently. It really does. I know when I saw it when I was younger, I didn't understand. But now I do. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I think it's really cool that we can sit here, speak about something that obviously makes us maybe emotional maybe touches a, a sore part of our hearts um, and really just open up about it because I really hope that if someone's listening to this, they resonate with it mm -hmm. and they think, wow, I'm not the only one. Like I mentioned, I have a lot of friends, both male and female, who go through that. And I think it's something that, yes, even though there's a lot of it in society now, body positivity, many people still don't talk about. Definitely. And I think that a lot of the times <clears throat> campaigns for certain products will leverage out of that rhetoric without intentionally really promoting what is body positivity. Yeah. Because it's something that you can leverage on and that you can sell and you can utilize this to make your product look positive. But then you also have to make sure that you know that, these, that they're doing it out of a real place. Because I know, for example, speaking about Pride Month, a lot of people talk about how watch see which companies all of a sudden totalmente, are very prideful totalmente. and the same with um body positivity i there's this one act no she's a model i'm sorry mm -hmm. this model that i love you probably know her her name's ashley graham yeah I do. she's a beautiful plus size model and because of her i've actually been very comfortable in my skin because she really you know broke a lot of barriers when it came to body positivity she was like one of the first plus size models on a maxim cover mm -hmm. which is really hard for people to see and i remember that she was if i'm not wrong she was part of the campaign for barbie releasing their first plus size barbie mm -hmm. and when i saw that i kid you not ritzy i had tears in my eyes yeah. when i saw that campaign because i never saw myself in anything you know and that's also a big reason why i love selena as well selena quintanilla because selena was not a stick she had like curves and to me i was like wow there's actually somebody out there that has curves just like i do mm -hmm. so it's really cool to see representation of our bodies and people that are in the media yeah but just because there is representation of our bodies in the media i.e curves there's still that i I'm not like a thin curve. I'm like a bigger curve. Does mm. that make sense? <laughs> I Well, elaborate. Uh, elaborate on, on it. Yeah. I mean, more so there's that curvy girl that everybody wishes they could be. But it's the curvy girl that has a bigger butt and bigger boobs, but has a flat stomach. Mm. And that's not reality. Right. The, uh, the so-called the hourglass. The what is it called? The flupa? When like the get the like that's a thing but you don't see that portrayed in the media when you see a curvy girl for example so when you do have that you constantly question am i even good enough because i have that and i'm sure on the other side it's probably like you have there's also something that you probably see and you're like wow that's not my body type at all it's close to my body type but i still have things that don't resonate with that yeah i mean i I can s sort of speak for myself when I say that that would be my body type, right? And sometimes I, I, some of the, some of the artists that, for example, my friends listen to that, and, and the bodies that they oftentimes will venerate is not my body type. 
Exactly. So you never win on each side, I think. Whether you're thin or you're bigger, you definitely don't win. And that's why I constantly tell myself and I remind my close friends that it doesn't matter what people say about you because who are they to even question what you look like, who you are. If they're and Ritzy knows that I say this. I always say like if they're questioning you, why do they even care to question you? Mm. Why does it matter? Why why does their opinion matter? So I think that um like we obviously already tapped into the sensitive, like a very sensitive part and we could ramble on for days on this topic and i think if one day we get the chance to and get to meet people in person i think we'd love to talk more about it in person because i know that many people would resonate with us and this topic um but we also want to talk about body positivity on the sense of like how to be healthier how to love your body how to have self-care right as Ozzy mentioned yeah porque me quiero me cuido y mm-hmm. cuídate para quererte más y quiérete suficiente para cuidarte no necesariamente to fulfill uh, societal constructions of, of beauty mm-hmm. or uh, others I- ideals of beauty but but for yourself yes for uh, yourself which is what Ozzy really promotes thro- throughout his gym he does your body is a temple you always hear that it's a quote (laughs) and it really is i mean think about it your body is what wakes you up in the morning your body Mm -hmm. is what goes to sleep at night and resets itself your body is it's super super simple Uh, i actually have a fitness instagram and the reason i made it for that the reason i actually made it a long time ago was to motivate myself when i lost sense of why i was doing what i was doing which is self-care Mm -hmm. I know a lot of it is based around health and fitness, but a lot of the quotes on there are to remind myself why I'm doing what I'm doing. And one of my favorite quotes on there is, why do you hate your body when your body has the legs that put you from point A to point B? Mm. Your body has the mouth that allows you to speak, to have a mind. Your body has the ears that hear and spark your knowledge on certain things so we i think because of what we see in society we constantly judge our exterior but your body is the reason why your interior is the way it is and why you wake up and why we're so grateful every day to wake up and really just explore the world i it's i love that you mentioned that because i i do think that this reconnection respect and appreciation love and love for the body is something that is so like i said it's an, a revolutionary act but it's also an act an anti-colonial act because you're respecting a body that was historically not appreciated and though you may not see it that way when you wake up in the morning and you look at yourself and and te dices chingona in, in the mirror mm-hmm. uh that it, it's an act of resistance against hegemonic or the hegemony of beauty. Mm -hmm. That's why when we're talking about body positivity, how can we build an environment where that's positive and affirmative for the body, the self? But I also want to, I also want to mention body positivity for people who are disabled, Mm -hmm. Uh, because I think of uh, disability theorists and how through their work, they, they challenge Western definitions of a healthy body. And a healthy body oftentimes does not portray or does not include a person with a disability. Yeah. And for me, that's also really important. Of course, it is. Uh, and that and I think that goes into that creating that space where body positivity is not just an able-bodied, is not just a white body, is not just a cisgendered body. Mm-hmm. But that there are different bodies that are positively represented. It motivates you as well because, like you said, it's not a per like what people consider perfect. I love that when it comes to somebody who's disabled and they still go out of their way to take care of themselves and do things to better themselves, it really does push you and it motivates you 
to move and to be active not only in your physical but also like in your knowledge Mm -hmm. of how to take care of yourself i that's one of the things that i really really enjoy about um health it's being knowledgeable on what i'm doing and how i am i don't know if the word is rewarding (laughs) my body but what i am doing to better myself whether it's like in a stronger way or what kind of food i am eating that my body will benefit from it especially right now during the pandemic when you're bothering to take those extra vitamins or you're bothering to eat those extra fruits we saw that when the pandemic started yeah how ginger went out of stock <laughs> that's it, right i remember yeah. going to the grocery store and, th- and this was, was at the, the onset time the groceries were gone like the yeah. fruit was gone yeah. the first you're right the first time that fruits and veggies were gone the mm-hmm. first time girl the first time that my tea section was almost depleted I where know. when right now it's packed all right now over it's again packed yeah. i mean if it wasn't it would the, be horrible. yeah no but but it, it, that was a that was like a very eye-opening moment for me because i've been on this journey of self-love self-care for a while now taking yes, the veggies here. and mm-hmm. yeah you as well and we we um we share that in common um but i've been on this journey for a long time so to see that this pandemic struck something mm-hmm. in people to all of a sudden be healthier take care of their immune system it made me wonder why so many people don't already do it mm. and we we are constantly focused on being in a busy world or at least in chicago it's a city you're running around and that's why i love going to mexico because it kind of gives a pause to my life Mm -hmm. (laughs) um but over here you're constantly running around working all the time but we forget that our body we have to really take care of it and not only in the physical but emotional and in a nutritional level as well yeah in turn oftentimes we think of taking care of my body externally and it's taking care of your body mm-hmm. as well internally because there are things that your body needs that are not physically evident mm-hmm. uh but going back to that the taking care of my body and all of that i di- I, I think during it oftentimes it can be a privilege too and, and we speak about it when you're lower income it is so hard to take care of your body in 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 nutritional ways and etc yeah. going to the pan going to back to the topic of the pandemic and and the teas and and taking care of yourself the pandemic allowed me right because schools went virtual my university my gra- graduate school went virtual for me it allowed me to sit down and finally eat an entire meal yeah <laughs> be eat an entire meal take tea or vitamins or, or the things that i wasn't able to take because new york is a different hustle and bustle compared to chicago, chicago. they're their cities mm-hmm. they're metropolitan cities mm-hmm. but it was the commutes from brooklyn to manhattan mm-hmm. when i moved out of manhattan the commute from brooklyn to manhattan not eating at a certain time like my though the I would eat at very different times sometimes Mm -hmm. because working and attending graduate school and juggling two jobs it's hard Mm -hmm. and in those moments your body at least in my experience my body wasn't always a priority and the pandemic kind of allowed me to sit down take these virtual classes and then realize that my body really was a priority of course for the sake of preparing my immune system for the virus and obviously you and i are talking about body positivity again it's it's you going back and reconnecting with your body and loving your body and remembering about it and remembering to nurture it internally and externally like i previously mentioned I, I right actually right before the pandemic started that's when I joined the boxing gym that's right and I always liked working out but I had this itch of one like com- like inter- interested in like what boxing was and I joined this boxing gym and I remember telling myself you need to stop allowing your busy lifestyle to get in the way of taking yourself and your mind and that was why like it became my daily thing to work out at the gym and that's why i really fell in love with the sport and obviously till now i like really really love the sport um because i wanted to focus on you know my physical health but also my my nutrition because 
I also was not eating full meals. I wasn't eating snacks. And many people don't know this, but when you don't eat, your body actually has to eat whatever is inside already so right. that you end up gaining weight. And a lot of people think it's the opposite. They think because you're not eating meals, you're losing weight, but your body has to eat the fat that's already in your body. Yeah. Whether you're skinny or bigger, it still has to eat the fat that's in there. So then you end up getting bigger. So, yeah, that was like a big motivator for me when the pandemic happened. Like I was already on that journey before, but I've been on this fitness, health, nutrition journey for I could easily say maybe 10, 15 years. And I'm still learning. I'm still growing in it. But more and more, I'm falling in love with it because I know that what motivates me to keep doing it and to take care of myself is my older self. Right. I want to grow old one day and be 60 70 and have the strength and you know be able to run or walk or whatnot because then especially in mexican american households i think that a lot of diseases are really big in generations and i don't want that to be the case with me yeah so that's why i'm really focused on having a good immune system and just being active because i need that blood circulating definitely <laughs> I need that heart pumping. I need those lungs working. <laughs> I don't go boxing, but I do I do walk a lot and you've seen. Oh yeah, she uh, guys, she walks so much. <laughs> I'm like, I, girl. <laughs> I love walking. That's so cool though. I really you know love, that walking love, is love the best walking. Form of exercise. And I didn't know that until you told me. Yeah, I told you that. I there's actually been studies that show that walking you burn more calories than running. And I didn't know yeah and that's amazing yeah but you have to stay active somehow but but like you've said it it, it is really important also for me to 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 love myself and to create a positive culture around my body positivity i do it for my little sister Mm -hmm. i do it for the young chicanas for the young chicanex and and i do it because like you 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 mentioned the plus size model ashley graham and how she was influential and and allowed you to see yourself reflected back and i think of myself as what can i do in order to create this this positive space where young chicanas and my little sister and my younger cousins Mm -hmm. love their bodies Mm -hmm. understand that though it is hard that there are ways to resist the the hegemony of beauty uh but so i think of that and it's Mm -hmm. something so important in my life it is and i i agree with you on that it kind of feeds off of the way you mentioned it right now reminds me of when we had the sibling conversation and how you kind of want to prepare those after you about what's ahead of them and i think it's definitely on us to make that change make the body positivity a really big topic in many people's lives and not because we want to focus on weight but we want to focus on taking care of your interior as much as you take care of your exterior making sure that it's a norm that no matter what shape or size you are you are beautiful and just like the quote says beauty is in the eye of the beholder just because fulanito como dicen los latinos fulanito no te ve así con ojos de brillo does not mean that the other person won't mm-hmm. um everybody has a person that maybe they look up to or or whatnot and you never know maybe you could be somebody's someone and not realize it so just make sure that you're taking care of yourself not only for yourself but for the generations to come and maybe it'll rub off on the people around you as well Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. never know (laughs) that is that's that's very true and speaking of that i also think of a of a question when you said the beauty is in the eye of the beholder listening to somebody i can't remember who it was and it might have been at a conference or a seminar where uh somebody asked the question is beauty in the eye of the colonizers and then you really question it and then there i was really young when i had heard when i had heard this i i I had just uh entered i don't know if it was graduate school or what it was but i had heard about back then and then it led me into years of 
questioning this and try and, and, and realizing this because I feel like the this question uh, alerts you to mm-hmm. is it hmm let, let me question and let me really see why that is considered beautiful and why this it might isn't and why there are these current trends and why are there there are these fa- fads right mm-hmm. of this is the ideal body this is not the ideal but this is the body that is socially relegated and, and and put aside uh and i find it so wonderful when i see chingona women who say fat is beautiful mm-hmm. and i even think of hay una canción de lido pimienta i was listening to her as i was uh driving and la canción se llama pelo cuco creo que así se llama la canción and you have to listen to it. I would explain the li- I would explain it to you, but it's going to take a while. <laughs> but it, 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 it the song pelo cucu, no, eso de que natural hair, right? The 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 idea of straightening your hair, mm-hmm. the idea of certain hairs are not considered uh, beautiful according to Western beauty standards, and and certain are, and so creo que esa, esa canción y muchas otras cosas no nos nos hacen alertos a mm-hmm. las cosas que sí son consideradas hermosas y las que no son de acuerdo de esta historia colonial. Mm-hmm. And I, re- I really, I really love Lido Pimienta, but that song really hits differently. There is, yeah, there, I, there is a couple of songs that really um, stand out to me when it comes to body positivity, and an advocate for body positivity is. We just mentioned her in the last episode, Demi Lovato. Mm -hmm. She actually has a song called I Love Me. Mm -hmm. And because obviously she battled eating disorders. That's right. She did. And she is actually a Chicana. And in the song, she talks about how she is always like a bully to herself. But in the song, she talks about how she bullies herself for the way she looks. Yet when a friend of hers complains about the way they look she praises them and tells them that they're beautiful and one of my best friends she always tells me this and when she tells me this it brings tears to my eyes she tells me sometimes I wish you could see yourself through my eyes and you wouldn't think that you're not beautiful because I have battled with my weight growing up and it's true I think that sometimes we see ourselves in this very negative light with flaws and all but we see our friends in this beautiful I guess you could say like in rose glasses we see them and we see all the beautiful things that they that they have not only in their exterior but in their interior so the song it really reminds me of like as nice as you are to the person that you love at the end of the day you should love yourself the most Mm. because you are your person like i mentioned earlier you are your temple and this body is the one that gets you from the morning to the night yeah so you should so that's why i really love that song and right now that you mentioned that it reminded me of that demi lovato song and this is not a chicanx figure by any means but i'm sure that you're familiar with rupaul Uh there's always something at the end of the show that he ends with his classic statement of if you don't love yourself how the hell are you going to love somebody else can you can i get an amen to that Mm -hmm. and it's true one day i was like i was feeling down in the dumps and i and i heard that and it, it hit me differently even though i had heard it every day it's true it is true they always say you have to love yourself first before you love someone else and I never realized that until I got older because it's really, really hard to love yourself sometimes because like we said in the beginning of the episode, society has already implemented in our minds the way that we should be. But you really are beautiful just the way you are, like mm-hmm. Bruno Mars once said. Mm-hmm. And one of my good friends, her slogan for her business is, be your own kind of beautiful. Yeah. And oh, yeah, I that's right. I really yeah. agree with that. It's definitely be your own kind of beautiful. Own who you are, honey. <laughs> Hair flip. <laughs> but really do own it own it own who you are and 
really just be confident in your own skin definitely being comfortable in one's own skin uh i love audrey lord and i had mentioned her previously in one of the earlier episodes and i think about a quote where she says that caring for myself is not self-indulgence it is self-preservation and that is an act of political warfare and i think of that so important as we speak about body positivity to also speak about self-love loving our bodies is a revolutionary act definitely is and it's on you to change the revolution (laughs) (laughs) the way he said it (laughs) so with that we are closing out today's episode pretty lengthy episode but it's okay because we're super passionate about this one topic and i hope that next season maybe we can bring like an expert guest to Mm -hmm. talk about you know body positivity and body image and kind of like dive in more into the subject and everything that we want to talk about with it so we are closing out we're closing out we thank ozzy first and foremost yes ozzy thank you so much for being part of our podcast today we are so happy to have you on uh for those of you that do not follow us on our social media platforms please do so you can find us on instagram facebook twitter youtube tiktok you can listen to the podcast on apple Podcasts, spotify google Podcasts, amazon music and youtube as well and you can find us under at hijas de la chicanex podcast i'll spell that out for you just like i do every time it's h-i-j-a-s-d-l-c-h-i-c-a-n-x podcast Thank you guys so much for listening to our episode today. We hope we opened your mind up and you learned a little bit more about us. As always, our conversations are conversations that are had to leave the door ajar for future ones. Definitely. And hopefully we did that with this specific episode. Uh, Remember, happy Pride Month. Remember to buy from small businesses, from LGBTQ plus businesses and not big corporations. And as well remember that your voices matter and i will add in this episode love your body ama tu cuerpo amate a ti misma me estoy escuchando como walter mercado pero amor y paz <laughs> no es es cierto todo. no i know i don't mean to laugh it's just the way you said it but yes sí. i agree with you 100 yeah, percent. love I mean, yourself love who you are thank your body for just putting up with all the crap you put up with (laughs) thank you guys for listening we'll talk to you guys next week